Well, um, Alan and I, Alan Moore and I, had worked together on quite a few things in British comics. We'd done short stories, twist ending stories for 2018, and we found that we were very much, although we're quite different in, in appearance, and we, we're quite similar in our background. We grew up in a similar kind of town. We both went to a certain kind of school, which was a rather academic school. We both loved the same kind of comics. We had the same approach, quite a meticulous approach, and we just worked, worked well together. When Alan had me draw a thing called uh, Chrono Cops. This was a sort of twist ending time travel story that called for an incredible amount of detail and a lot of manipulating of time and space in a very precise way. He realized that I could probably draw anything that he wanted me to draw. He could ask me to draw anything and I'd be able to draw it. And I think he filed, filed that away. Uh, and when I got into American comics was before he came on the scene and he was working away in England and I tried to get him into American comics, or get him and me in as a team several times. Mm. Alan wrote a wonderful treatment of uh, Challenges of the Unknown, mm. and I started to pitch it to DC, and they said, no, actually, we've already promised the Challenges of the Unknown to somebody else, so that went by the board. Then we came up with the John Johns, Manhunter from Mars stuff. S tried to pitch that again, no, sorry, that's been promised to somebody. Len Wein phoned me up and said, oh, hi, Dave, wonder, have you got the phone number of a writer called Alan Moore? So I said, yes, 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 I have, and I gave it to him. And he phoned up Alan, and I think Alan believed it was a joke and put the phone down on him. And then eventually they did get together and, and they got Alan on Swamp Thing, which was inspired because it just, Alan just transformed it. And they immediately saw the quality of what Alan could do and the way that he could take these kind of hackneyed and somewhat tired ideas and turn them to something interesting. And they just acquired the Charlton characters and they said to Alan, you know, we've got these characters, maybe you'd like to do something with them. And Alan had this story that he kind of polished up since he was a kid, this idea of a, a superhero murder mystery. So he, he did them a pitch um, that kind of was based on that. And I heard from somebody that he was doing this and I phoned him up and I said, Alan, you know, maybe this is the thing we could do together. And he said, yeah, that'd be great, David. I think you, you do it really well. So around that time, DC flew me to Chicago to a convention, the first time I'd ever been as a professional to an American convention. And uh, all the DC guys were there. And DC had a party, this is one particular evening, the second night of the convention. And I went up to Dick Giordano and I said, Dick, I've been talking to Alan, I understand that he's doing this uh, version of the Charm characters for you. I'd really, I'd really love to draw that. And Dick said, oh, how does Alan feel about that? I said, yeah, he'd really like me to do it. He said, okay, it's yours. So that was Watchmen. I turned around thinking, oh, that's great. I can work on this thing with Alan. Not thinking it was going to be what it became, but just great. I can work with Alan. He's a really good writer. I'm really going to enjoy doing this. Yeah. I turned around. Julie Schwartz, my favorite editor as a kid, said, so Dave, I, I won't do the New York accent, but he said, so Dave, when are you going to draw some Superman for me? And I said, anytime you like, Julie, who's going to be writing? He said, who do you want to write it? I said, Alan Moore. He went, sure, fix it up. <laughs> So that was that was three minutes one evening, yeah. and that was the best probably con party that I've ever been to. <laughs> uh, and when we got back to New York, because we all went back to New York from there, I phoned Alan up from Julie's desk phone and said, "Oh, Alan, you know, do, do you want to write some Superman for me to draw while we're getting going on on Watchmen?" "Oh yeah, that'd be great." And I, actually, I've got a really good idea for a Superman story. And then we we kicked around ideas for, for Watchmen, and then Alan came around my house and we sat on my sofa and did sketches and bashed ideas backwards and forwards and as an afterthought almost in the taxi going to the station I said oh what about that Superman story and it was an afterthought to, to that anyway he wrote he wrote this incredible story called for the man who has everything and I was working on that we had this real kind of space where we were working on that quite happily but there was enough time that I could work on designs and send those backwards and forwards and then contracts were signed as we all know and um, we started work on, on, on Watchmen together. But it, it, it was no longer the Charlton characters. No, because when DC saw what Alan wanted to do with the Charlton characters, which was basically declare several of them insane, kill other ones, mm -hmm. they thought, well, you know, we just paid hard cash for this, maybe we won't. So come up with some new characters. And that was actually the making of it. We realised that what we had were the Charlton characters, and they were always sort of kind of second string characters, the Charlton characters. We had like archetypal genres of superhero we had you know the masked detective we had the kind of batman with the gadgets we had the superman the god 
we ha you, you know we had all the basic things so we thought well let's get these archetypes and tailor them more precisely to the story we want to tell so they're not exactly equivalent to the charm characters there's the same number of them but you know there's not like a guy who does judo or a guy you, you know who looks like an insect that's yeah. so so we ch and that was the really liberating thing because it completely freed us from any notion of having to adhere to continuity and it, it meant again as i say that we could write them and draw them exactly to suit our narrative. Yeah.